This video is brought to you by AeroParts.com, high quality aftermarket parts and genuine OE brands. In this video I'm going to be replacing the starter in a 2006 Cadillac STS with the 3.6 liter V6. Before I start this video I want to cover something that a lot of people seem to struggle with. The Cadillac STS doesn't have as much room as the CTS to get the starter out without removing some stuff or squeezing it out. Some people were able to get it out without removing anything. I attempted to do this and was unable to do that so I ended up removing the catalytic converter. If you choose this method you will have to consider the amount of rust that's on your car. If you live in any region where they put salt down on the roads in the winter time then I would highly consider replacing the two catalytic converter bolts on the back of the catalytic converter because they will most likely break when you go to remove them. The STS in this video is a west coast car and had no issues like that. Of course the bolts still look pretty rough but I was able to get them out. Now if this is what a west coast car looks like I can only imagine what an east coast car looks like. If this happens you basically just knock or drill the stud out and you can replace it with a bolt and nut combination like this. Stainless steel is highly recommended for exhaust stuff. If you're looking for an alternative to removing the exhaust you can also remove the lower bolt on the driver's side engine mount and use a jack and a block of wood to lift the engine enough to get the starter out and of course rust is still to be considered when using that method. Now getting into this job, first things first, disconnect the battery. I didn't record that, but that's the most important step. STS, this is with the 3.6 liter V6. This V6 does not have the starter on the top. Like the V8 does, the V8 you have to remove the intake manifold and it's gonna be underneath. There is a way to remove it. With Let's take a look. The starter, is right there. If you come even further underneath, it is right there. Right here, there's another 15 millimeter. That's what it is, 15 millimeter bolt. up here which is a 13 is what I removed this what the starter has going to be this one on the top by my head the connector Now there's a knock sensor behind this starter that you're going to have to remove. Here is another view of the starter where you can actually see the bolts. To reach those starter bolts, I'm using a 15 millimeter socket with a bunch of extensions and a universal joint socket. Let me get this thing in. And this is just a better shot of that setup. Now I'm going to remove the knock sensor and I have the exact same setup but with a 13 millimeter. And I know somebody out there probably broke that sensor because it's kind of easy to do. So if that was you, here's a close up picture of the sensor and the part numbers to hopefully help you out. But now we have the starter loose and this is the starter wire, the main power wire for the starter. Now just take a quick note of this clip, the starter wire is tucked away from the exhaust so when you put it back on you want to make sure you put it back on the same way. Now that the starter was loosened up I tried to just remove it which I couldn't. I know some people could but I was just unable to so if you're able to get this hey good for you. But I ended up removing the steering joint linkage first. There's only two bolts that hold it on it's really not that hard to take this off. Just marked it with whiteout so I don't put it on backwards 
and it comes right off. You slide it up and take it out. While this is off, don't move your steering wheel or your wheels to ensure everything is the same when you put it back on. When it's all loosened up, just lift it up and then pull it down. The installation is simply just a reverse process. And here I am trying again to remove it without removing the catalytic converter. It can be done. I don't want to tell you to follow my guide directly. If you're able to do it, then go for it. Make your attempt. I really did try, okay? It's <laughs> it's not easy. I really tried to do it and I decided I'm just taking out the catalytic converter. All right, we are now under the car. I have to remove the exhaust. I don't know how, why I thought I could do it without removing the catalytic converter. I tried, but oxygen sensor. And it has one of your typical GM type of locking connections. You have to slide that yellow lock back before you can disconnect that sensor. Now there are only four bolts holding the catalytic converter on. Two on the top and two on the bottom. In order to get the ones on the top, gotta remove the heat shield and it's only held on by three 10 millimeter bolts. I'm going to show you those locations right now. You also have to slide this out of the way. You just slide it down and off of the bracket. I'm just going to show you some close-up pictures so you have an idea of what you're working with. Now for those heat shield 10 millimeters, I got both of the top ones and I'm going to get the bottom one from underneath the car. It was a lot easier to reach it from underneath. Now once you get that heat shield all loosened up, you can just push it out of the way. You don't even have to remove it to access the two 15 millimeter nuts on the top. Here is how I removed them. I used the breaker bar with a bunch of half inch extensions. If it's rusty, use some heat before you remove it. This one wasn't bad and it came right off. And here are the two 13 millimeters that we discussed at the beginning of the video. These ones came off no problem on this car. And for those who live in the rust belt where they throw salt down on the roads, I'm just going to be honest with you, these are probably both going to break. You can replace them, it just takes a little bit more time and I went over that in the beginning of the video so if you didn't see the beginning of the video I highly recommend checking it out. Now once you have them all off you can start to separate them, use a pry bar if it helps you. And once you have it out, you have full access to the starter. Out comes the old starter. And finally, you can put my new starter in. And it is the reverse process from here. Make sure you might have to use a pry bar to get that lower catalytic converter pipe back in. I fought with it a little bit, but I was able to get it eventually. And make sure you have that power wire for the starter tucked away from the catalytic converter. It's supposed to be away from heat. Just, just keep that in mind when you put it all back together. And here's just a few images of the upper heat shield on the catalytic converter so you can see how it goes on.
and that's it everything else from here is just a reverse process i really appreciate you checking this video out and i hope it helps you out just a little bit even if you didn't have to remove the exhaust there will be more content coming soon for this car so make sure to like and subscribe and i really appreciate you guys for checking this video out and don't forget if you're looking for high quality aftermarket parts or oe brands check out aeroparts.com